For most of the class, we have been focusing on parametric statistics using scale level data. But what do we do when our data are ordinal, or maybe nominal? We do have options, and they're called non-parametric statistics. So for week 15, we're going to focus on non-parametric statistics, and specifically the chi-square statistic. Why do we need these non-parametrics? We already know how to compare scale level data. We use things like ANOVA, t-tests, and regressions to better understand our variables at the scale level. But what if we had nominal data? Let's say I put forth six types of soda and asked, which one would you prefer? Well, let's say we have 100 or 120 people. They would all choose their favorite. And at the end of that, what we would have are counts. How many people preferred the first type? How many people preferred the second type? But we wouldn't have scale data. We would have really nominal data based upon the type of soda. How do we do comparisons with that? Well, we have options with non-parametric statistics that do not require us to have parametric assumptions. Most statistics estimate parameters from the sample. You remember we would do a sample and then use the value of the standard deviation from the sample to estimate the value of the standard deviation in the population, which we didn't know. Well, now we're going to use a different type of test, not like a t-test, which relies upon assumptions about the population, called a parametric test, but rather a type of test that does not rely upon parametric assumptions, and these are called non-parametric tests. They're very useful when the data are at the nominal or the ordinal level. Non-parametric tests also have the advantage that we can use them at times when our parametric tests break down or the assumptions of the test have been too badly violated to use the parametric statistics. So non-parametric tests are not susceptible to outliers in the same way that parametric tests are. And if the assumptions have been violated, we can still use a non-parametric alternative to the other type of test that we might want to use. It also turns out that in many cases, they're actually easier to calculate. Chi-square is something you can do by hand almost as easily as you can do in SPSS. But the trade-off is that when we use non-parametric tests, they are not as powerful as parametric tests. It's harder to find effects that exist. So there's a greater chance for type 2 errors using non-parametric statistics. For each of the parametric tests that we have learned, there is a non-parametric alternative or equivalent. So for instance, the independent sample t-test has a non-parametric equivalent called the Mann-Whitney U-test. For paired samples t-test, we could do the Wilcoxon test instead. One-way ANOVA is matched by the Kruskal-Wallis, and a repeated measures ANOVA is matched by a Freeman's test. So no matter the parametric test that we've learned about, there's another way of doing that test using a non-parametric approach. The one that we're going to focus on, however, is the chi-square test. And the chi-square compares what we find in a sample to what we would expect to find under certain assumptions. The first assumption that we're going to use is that everything is occurring randomly. In other words, everything should pretty well shake out equally. And does what we find in our data match what we would expect to find if that assumption that everything is occurring randomly was true? Now, to find out more about the non-parametric alternatives, go to the bear handout and you'll see how each of the parametric tests we've learned has an alternative, although we're not going to learn how to run each one of them right now, I want you to know that those alternatives are available.